In lab five, we have the fractional distillation, and for a fractional distillation, we can start with the simple boiling point apparatus that we had set up in lab two for distilling our compound, and all we have to change about it is to have the other condenser, and the other condenser, if you look down the center of it, you'll see three little pieces of glass poked out into the center of the condenser so that you can pour something down in the condenser and it'll catch it and hold it in there. And so what we do is fill the condenser up with little glass beads. And you want to be careful that you don't get the glass beads up into the ground glass joint because what we'll do is place this in between what we had for uh, where our boiling liquid is and then what we'll do is as our stuff distills we'll collect it into a graduated cylinder and you all have a graduated cylinder in your drawer and what you'll do is every milliliter that comes across record the temperature on the thermometer so that you can make a graph of the temperature of your distillation versus how many milliliters you have and then you can compare that to what a simple distillation would look like for a distillation. Now what we have here, a fractional distillation, is basically what they do at an oil refinery in where they start with the crude oil in the bottom and distill off at the different fractioning points the different grades of petroleum distillates that they will then sell for whatever they need to do. So in lab five we're doing the fractional distillation. Some of you will use ethyl acetate, butyl acetate, some of you will use heptane and pentane. It depends on what your instructor wants you to use. And what you'll do is you'll have a mixture of 50-50 of the two liquids. You'll pour them in there and what happens is they both start to boil in the beginning and the lower boiling compound will, more of it, will hit, enter the vapor phase, end up going into the, the condenser where we have the glass beads. It'll hit the cold glass beads and drip back down into the solution and, and be heated up again to the vapor phase. And as we're doing this, the lower boiling compound will go through the glass beads more than the higher boiling compound, which will hit the, the cold glass beads and drip back down into the solution and will end up separating out in the first fraction, a vast majority of it will be the lower boiling compound. And then you'll dump that out and collect a second fraction. The second fraction will be a vast mix of both the lower and higher boiling compounds. And then the third fraction will be primarily all the higher boiling compound. Now in this lab you start with about 35 mils of liquid that you pour into your round bottom flask and so half of it, 17 mils is the lower boiling and roughly 17 milliliters is the higher boiling compound. So you know how much of each of them you added into your distillation flask. And as you're going along the temperature on your thermometer will stay pretty steady for the lower boiling compound and when it starts to rise rapidly, what you'll do is switch from the first fraction, dump that out, and collect the second fraction. And that'll continue to rise rapidly, and then it'll start to level off, and then you switch to your third fraction. The first and third fractions will have a large amount of liquid in them, whereas the second fraction may only have two or three milliliters in it, because as you're going up the, the temperature, of distilling your compound, it rises very rapidly as you run out of the lower boiling compound, so you have very little in that second fraction. And of the three fractions, then you can go over to the refractive index and run a refractive index on all three to see what percentage you have of each of your two compounds in each of your fractions from the distillation.